I've been banging on about this for about, well, two years now, and uh, nobody seems interested in this topic. I got a head in the sand, clearly. I thought I'd make another video. <laughs> Since there's more research on this topic of um, forever chemicals, PFAs. Well, I would say it is deeply concerning, and I really don't know what the, what the answer is, What, how we will actually rectify this situation. Fortunately, there are some enzymes that could actually help us. But not yet. No. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about these PFAs. Yeah, and this is an article about two or three years ago. And uh, PFAs were found to be in pizza boxes and rainwear and places like that. These polyalkali substances, yeah. Plural alcohol substances. I don't know how to say that word, but it's a big word. And it sounds dangerous because it's a big word. <laughs> Maybe. But this was um, back in 2019, this article was, and it wasn't the first one I read, actually. It was a while back. And it all stems back to, um, well, like non-stick, you know, Teflon in your frying pans and stuff. And I thought, oh, hang on, that ain't very good. We've got these chemicals in our frying pans. We're cooking with it, eating our food. <laughs> Coated them in PFAs. I thought, hmm, that's not clever. And I thought, what are these PFAs? Well, then I find out, well, basically they're chemicals that end up in your body and they never leave. They build up over a period of time. Well, eventually, they make you sick and give you cancer. Well, at least that is what is assumed by this. What recent research has found. Well, it's not just in things like frying pans. It's been now being found in, oh, well, pet food. Dangerous levels have been has been found in, in our pet food, and there's some um, potentially danger, dangerous exposure for our cats and our dogs. This was November last year. Much of America's pet food packaging could be contaminated with PFAs. So going back to packaging again, so we cut down on the packaging, we might help prevent some, or, you know, some of the causes here. Is it the inks used to print the packaging? I don't know. Either way, toxic. There are potentially dangerous exposure to toxic compounds for cats and dogs. But it isn't just cats and dogs. That's mere humans. We know that there's... um. Wide scale uh, pollution across the United Kingdom and Europe. A major mapping um, project, which they've now done, reveals that PFAs have been found at high levels at thousands of sites. This is not something we should be ignoring and sticking our head in the sand. This is a situation that's rapidly progressing and more knowledge becomes available. Now, like I said, this is literally today in an in a article I read today. Um, in a study, they found that um, there is an enzyme that's in, well, in the bacteria, E. coli, that can actually break down these particular types of um, PFA chemicals. So there is hope. But the problem is, once it gets into you, that is it going to help you, this particular enzyme? Possibly not. We don't know what our heart, we don't know what the side effects of this enzyme or is likely to be. And besides, it's only just sort of, well, let me just find out about this thing. So it's like, when will it ever, if it is, going to be a, well, a help to us? So yes, it's, um, the pollution is right across the UK and, and Europe. If I just show the little map, give you a little idea of the concentrations of this stuff. It's quite intense. There we go. Uh, let's just reduce that down a bit. So it's, there you go. Right. Now, if you look on this map here, it's a bit sort of a, well, a bit abstract, but as you can see on the, the left area here, with a, that's obviously the United Kingdom, high concentrations with us, high population. And the same in mainland Europe, high population has high concentrations. It's, it's the way that we're, we're living, we're caught obviously part of the problem here because we're creating, well, we're creating the products that have these uh, PFA chemicals in them. And they used to say we are the cause. Pretty much tells you that here, really, because where we are is where is the biggest situation, yeah, where the problems are the greatest. But you know what else is at risk now? Is our fish and chips. Yes, it's been revealed that this, uh, that the fish is, well, it's 
packed with cancer-causing uh, forever chemicals. Flounder dab place all been found to contain highly persistent industrial pollutants. Fish and chip shops and crisis due to a war in Ukraine. Well, we know that because, well, you might not know this, but that we are actually buying Russian cod. Okay, it's sanctioned, but all it is is that they put a VAT on it, basically. A tax onto the cod. Quite a high tax, about 40 odd percent, but it's still, t you know, it's still blood money. Well, testing of forever chemicals in England's wild uh, fish has found high levels of industrial pollutant that, if eaten more than twice a year, it would exceed recommended EU safety guidelines. Per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, substances BFAs, are a class of nearly 10,000 chemicals that are used in many household goods all around us, such as non-stick cookware, like I was mentioning about Teflon. Oh, waterproof fabrics, personal care products. You're slapping this stuff all over your skin, ladies, and some men. I never understood it myself. Go natural. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, waterproof products, personal care products, and stain-proof coatings on carpets, like scotch bright and stuff like that. And uh, so two particular types, the PFOs and PFOA, build up in the humans as humans and have been linked to health problems, including cancer and liver damage, decreased fertility and increased risk of uh, asthma and thyroid disease. Well, I've got both of them. <laughs> Maybe that's what's happened to me. I'm asthmatic. I feel I need an inhaler now. <laughs> and, I, and I have to take medication for my thyroid, which is about here somewhere. Reminds me, I need to take one of them. So, oh, the data obtained by watershed investigations, a team of journalists investigating water issues and are shared with um, PA news agencies shows that contamination in flounder, dab and place throughout England's uh, rivers and coastal habitats with the highest readings in the Thames, Mersey and the Weir. So we've got all these PFAs and... Uh, in our rivers and seas, but also oh, all the turds as well. Well, we know that. So one sample taken from flounder in the Thames at Woolwich showed it contained 52.2, um, 52.1 milligrams per kilogram of PFAs. An average adult weighing 75 kilos who ate a regular size portion 170 grams of this fish more than once 175 grams that's not a portion no if you're good fish and chip shop it's at least four or five times that's like a whole fish this fish uh, more than uh, well if you eat this fish more than uh, once every five months would exceed the recommended safety allowance by european food safety authority the efsa well so many people, they're buying this every week and at higher levels than that. You can imagine how we're overloading ourselves with these PFAs. It's like the, I don't know, you get home from work or on the way home from work on a Friday. It's fish and chip night for a lot of people. It really is. We well, don't go live in France. I'm not too keen on these frozen fri um, frits now. I like proper chips and cut chips. They got real potatoes. Well, I can't have them at the moment because I'm on a keto diet. Needs must. Well, there is currently no such set of guidelines in the United Kingdom. Surprise, surprise. Although a spokesperson for the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, you know, DEFRA. Oh, totally scoffy. Do you trust her? Mm, leave that in the comments down below. Well, well, anyway, there will be a secret word at the end of this video. PFA chemicals are in the environment because they have um, been used widely in products and are extremely persistent. See, nobody thought about this stuff. Nobody even knew about PFA chemicals, really, for, well, for a long, long time. It wasn't really considered as even an issue. But it is now. Just like Roundup. In fact, this enzyme can actually break down the harmful um, stuff in Roundup as well, actually, apparently. The one that's found in the E. coli. You know, we were using that stuff for donkeys years, and uh, now we're told it's toxic has been banned. Lisa Fate, 360 GL. Buy that for a dollar. Well, since the 2000s, we have taken action to increase monitoring and support a ban 
or a highly re restrict specific PFAs, both domestically and internationally. We continue to work with regulators to further understand the risks of the PFAs and implement measures to address them. So I would hope, I would really hope that Tracy Kofi, Tracy Kofi's department is maybe look more closely at these PFAs than the turnips and tomatoes at the minute. Because this is a long-term problem. And it's, when you look at that map that I showed you earlier, it's not very hopeful, is it? How on earth are we going to reverse this? How the hell are we going to reverse global warming? Oh, we're doomed! <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, you tell me what you think and the word of the day, I'll let you know in a minute, but please click like and subscribe and maybe that little bell icon because then you get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. You want to support the channel, you can do that on Patreon or you can buy us coffee and the links are down below in the description. It's very much appreciated and I couldn't do it without it. Anyway, I might do some more of this sort of video because it's quite depressing talking about Brexit constantly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you tell me what you think. Please leave it in the comments down below. And the word of the day is uh, plastic fish, polyfish, polyfluoral alcohols. So it's yes, plastic fish. Yep. <laughs> Ta-ta. Don't forget.